graphs and networks, planar graphs and Euler's formula. Planar graphs, the word plane means a flat surface, like this piece of paper. And so a planar graph can be drawn on a plane, that is a flat surface on paper, so that no edges cross. Look what we say, intersect, we'll just say cross. I'll learn to spell. Except, of course, that they all intercept at vertices. So that's the definition of a planar graph. Now we can sort of look at a graph and think, hey, that's not planar. But you remember that we can have isomorphic graphs, that is, two graphs drawn differently but saying the same thing. So some graphs can look non-planar, so CE crosses AD here. But if we draw CE out here, we've still got a path, an edge going from C to E, it just doesn't cross AD. So if we are asked to show that a graph is planar, redraw it. Any edges that aren't problematic, we can just pop them in. And then this really is a case, we've got two choices here. A to D could move, or C to E could move. So it doesn't really matter, we'll keep A to D and move C to E. Now you will at times get graphs that are just so intertwined that you can't draw them in an isomorphic form that's planar and so they are non-planar graphs. This is a planar graph. To prove it, you'd redraw it, demonstrating that it's planar. Now, we do need to talk about the faces of the graphs, because if we think of the paper here as all one big region, this graph separates the paper into what we call different faces. So one face is, oh, let's go from exciting colors here. One face is all this stuff out here that is just the paper. So here we have face one. And then any other region of the graph that's like filled and surrounded by edges is another face. So I've got those two faces and this face here. Face one and we can just say whichever ones we want are face two, face three and face four. So this graph has four faces. Don't forget the outside face that is just the leftover paper. And this is an infinite face because it would keep going forever if the paper kept going forever. Euler's formula discovered, because Euler discovered, for connected planar graphs, So remember, connected, you can get to any vertex from any other vertex. There's a relationship between the number of faces, vertices, and edges. And obviously, we call V the number of vertices. F, the number of faces, and E, the number of edges. Oh, almost off screen there. And the relationship, which is Euler's formula, is V minus E plus F equals 2. 
that is, let me put that in an important box saying here is the really important formula here. The number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of faces is 2. So for this example here, have I given, sorry, just looking ahead. All right, let's do this one here. Verify Euler's formula for this planar graph. So Euler's formula is V minus E plus F equals 2. If you ask to verify it, you'd state the number of vertices, edges, and faces. So vertices, 1, 2, 3, 4. Edges, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Faces, 1, 2, 3, and 4, the outside face. Double check, 4 minus 6 plus 4 equals 2. It works. We've just verified Euler's formula. Euler's formula, formula is useful for a variety of things. One, you can use it to double check that a described graph is planar because if a connected graph follows that rule, it is planar. And you can also use it to find out the number of faces or vertices or edges given the other two. So a connected planar graph has six vertices and nine edges. How many faces does the graph have? Write vertices, edges and faces. Six vertices, nine edges. Faces is unknown. Write our formula, V minus E plus F equals 2. Substitute the values we know. 6 minus 9 plus F is 2. And we've got an equation that we can simplify. 6 minus 9 is negative 3 plus F is 2. To get F on its own, add 3 to both sides. F equals 5. Word question. Therefore, the graph has five faces. So this is some uses of Euler's formula.